When browsing through a website, you might have noticed that as you scroll down, the navigation link that is associated with the current section becomes highlighted or active. This feature is known as Scroll Spy and it can greatly enhance the user experience of a website. By highlighting the relevant navigation link, Scroll Spy allows the user to quickly identify where they are on the page and navigate to other sections with ease. Scroll Spy is particularly useful for websites with long pages that are divided into sections. It makes it effortless to navigate to different parts of the page without having to scroll up or down excessively to find the relevant section. This kind of functionality is becoming increasingly popular among web designers and developers because it improves the overall usability of the website. Let's begin by setting up our project. Firstly, we'll set the title. Next, we need to create the style CSS and script.js files within the directory. To include style, CSS will add it under the head tag while script.js will be included just before the body tag is closed. We have completed the initial setup and now we can move on to the HTML section. To define the sections of navigation links, we will use the nav HTML tag. We will wrap our main navbar with a div with the class main nav. Within this div, we will create an anchor tag with the class logo, which will represent our navbar logo. The navigation links will be placed inside the UL tag with the class navbar. Each individual nav link will be placed inside the LI tag with the class menu item. Similarly, to represent a navigation link, we will place an anchor tag with the class menu link. As we know, we can place a link in an anchor tag. In href attribute, we will set it to home, which suggests that it is linking to a specific section with the ID of home on the same web page. For other navigation links, we can simply copy and paste and make the required changes. After successfully creating navigation links for our web page, we need to move on to the next step creating sections. These sections will be the main content areas of our web page and they should be linked with the navigation links we have created. To create a section, we will use the class content. This class will be used for all the sections we create for our web page. Each section will have an ID that we will link to its respective anchor tag. For now, we will only create an H1 tag within each section. We will create a total of 5 sections for our web page. To link each section with its respective anchor tag, we need to specify the ID we set for the section. It should be the same as the ID we set for the navigation link that links to a particular section. And we will make necessary changes to the H1 tag for each section. Once each section has been assigned an ID, our web page will be good to go. In order to make the navigation link active on scroll, we will need to write CSS styles. To begin with, we will be using the popular Poppins font from Google. To access this font, we will import the relevant code into our CSS file. This will allow us to customize the font's properties and apply it to our sidebar. The CSS selectors and pseudo elements will be used for global styling purposes. The box sizing property is set to border box and both margin and padding are set to zero. We will set the list style of our ally tag to none to remove the default bullet styles and numbering. To remove the underline from the anchor tag, we will set its text decoration to none. The Poppins font family will be used for all text on the web page. Next, we will style our navigation bar. Firstly, we will style the nav tag by setting its position to fixed, which will fix the navbar's position even when the user scrolls a page. Furthermore, we will set its left and right to 0px to ensure that the navbar spans the full width of the viewport. Its background color will be purple and its padding top and bottom will be 1.5 rem while the left and right padding will be 0. The main wrapper for our navbar with class main nav will have a maximum width of 1070px. We will set the margin top and margin bottom to 0 while margin left and margin right to auto. The padding top and bottom will be 0px, while the left and right padding will be 15px. We will set its display property to flex, which will allow us to use flex properties. To vertically align child elements, we will set the align item property to center, and the justify content property will be set to space between. The element with class logo will have a font size of 1.2rem, 
a font weight of 800 and its color will be white. Our UL element with class navbar will have a display set to flex which will align child elements horizontally. Our list item will have padding top bottom 0 while left right will be 5px. Similarly, our link will have a white color, a font size of 1 rem and its padding top and bottom will be 0 while the left and right padding will be 0.5 rem. Its font weight will be 300. We also need to style sections with the class content. Firstly, we will give it a height of 100 VH which will ensure that the content area fills the entire vertical space of the viewport. Its display will be set to flex and justify content and align items properties will be set to center. Its background color will be black and its color will be white. To style the alternate element with class content, we will set its background color to white and its color to yellow using this CSS code. We have finished with the CSS code and now it's time to move on to our JavaScript section. In JavaScript, to declare a variable that cannot be reassigned later in the code, we use the cons keyword. To select all elements from the HTML document, we use the built-in function document.querySelectorAll, which targets the section element with both an ID and class of content. Next, we will create a function called scroll tracker. Within this function, we will declare a constant current y scroll, which will hold the number of pixels that the document has been scrolled vertically from the top. To obtain this value, we will use the built-in property scroll y. Within the same function, we will iterate over each section and perform the necessary operations on each one individually. For this, we will have a variable section height that holds the current section's height obtained using the offset height property. We will also have a variable section top which will hold the top position of the current section subtracting 100 pixels to adjust for fixed navigation bars that cover part of the section. To retrieve the current section's id attribute value, we will use the javascript method get attribute. The retrieved id will be stored in the id variable. With this id value, we can now select the navigation link. We will declare a variable named current nav link that stores the element with the current navigation link. To retrieve the nav link within the navbar, we will use the document.querySelector method and select the anchor tag that has a link to our current section's ID. To determine whether each section is currently in view based on the scroll position and update the corresponding navigation link accordingly, we can use an if statement. Within this if statement, we check if the current vertical scroll position current is scroll is greater than the top position of the current section top. We also check if the current vertical scroll position current is scroll is less than or equal to the sum of the top position of the section top and the height of the section height. If both conditions are true, it means the current scroll position is within the boundaries of the section, indicating it's in view. Therefore, we add the active class when the section is in view. If either of the conditions is false, which means the section is not in view, we remove the active class from the corresponding navigation link. Now that we have created our function, we need to trigger this function when the user scrolls. We add an event listener to the scroll event and attach our scroll tracker function. Finally, we need to style the link with the active class to differentiate it from other links. We target the link with the active class and give it a font weight of 800 for a bold appearance and a yellow color. Lastly, we will add the active class to our navigation link for the home. The home nav link will be highlighted by default when the page initially loads. Now that you know how to highlight a navigation link on scroll using JavaScript, I hope this tutorial was helpful and that you learned a useful functionality for your web page. Thank you for your time and please like, share and subscribe. This will motivate me to keep making these tutorials.